Hey guys, what's going on? This is Francois, your favorite American expat living in Seoul, South Korea. Whoa, there's a train coming by. Wish I had my camera. Anyways, it's been a long time since I made a video. I think the last video I made was about the incident that happened in Itaewon here in Seoul, which was very unfortunate. Um, yeah, my heart still goes out to all of those who were affected by the incident. However, you know, life continues. So we have to, you know, wake up and continue to live and do what we do every day. Guys, right, today I want to talk to you about five big important things that I've learned since I've lived abroad uh, for the last 15 years. Yeah, so tomorrow is actually the anniversary of me being in Korea for 12 years. But before I came to Korea, I lived in France for three years. So I've been gone from the US for a total of 15 years. Let me find another place to vlog because this train is annoying. I was saying I wanted to talk to you about five things that I've learned or major things that I've learned since living abroad. Of course, being away from the US for 15 years, I've learned quite a lot about the world around me and about myself. But these are five tips or five points that I think are essential for growth if you're outside of the States or at least essential for the growth that I've undergone. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is cultural relativism. Now, cultural relativism is when you meet a culture for the first time and you don't judge them based on your own culture. I think that's the best way to put it in layman's terms. When I moved from America to France, so France was the first overseas country where I lived, I was very scared and I was very nervous. And not only was I scared and nervous, but I tried to live in France the same way that I lived in the United States which of course it didn't work very well because France is a completely different country. The people have different goals, different visions, different dreams. You know, of course everyone eats, sleeps, and you know, does everything pretty much the same as other humans do. However, just the way of life was much different than it was in America. So I try to view my life in France through the same lens that I used when I lived in the United States. That did not work. I found myself uh, not being able to completely, I guess, integrate into French society as best as I could, you know, as a foreigner. So after some time, I learned to speak French better. I learned to enjoy French food more. I learned the nuances of French conversations, uh, how to interact with uh, French people on a daily basis. And that made my life much better when I lived uh, in France. Instead of trying to ask myself or find situations in France where it reminded me of, you know, the United States where I could negotiate better, I did my best to accept French culture for what it was and to try to live in France the best way I could by integrating a bit into French culture. The next thing that I want to say is when you move abroad, it is very important for you to pay attention to your finances. Extremely important. For me, there was no one to help me. There was no one to send me money in case of an emergency. There was no one to, to help me out in case of a bad situation. Yeah, I met some friends and I met some people who became very close to me while I was in France. However, if I got into a very, very bad situation, it was up to me to figure out how to get out of the situation, how to navigate out of the situation and find a solution for myself. So the next step that I want to talk to you about is creating a budget. You need to write a budget and you need to stick to that budget as best as you can. When you are living abroad, you might come into contact with other expats who have more resources than you. They might live a life that is more, I guess, luxurious than yours, or they might live a life that, you know, it's more aesthetically pleasing to you. And you might want to be a part of that life as well. However, you might not have the finances in order to keep up with the Joneses per se. In this regard, it is very, very important for you to not compare yourself to other people's finances, to create your own budget and to live by that budget. When push comes to shove and something happens to you, you might be hanging around with people who have more financial freedom than you. However, that financial freedom doesn't necessarily mean that those people are going to be able to financially help you or support you if something happens to you. So it is extremely, extremely important for you to make a budget and to stick to the budget as best as you can. Because when you are abroad, there is no one there who can help you except for yourself. So I can give you an example of uh, making a budget and not sticking to it. And this example comes from my life. When I was in France, I believe it was the last year when I was in France before coming to Korea, I ran out of money. And how did I run out of money? Well, 
I was supposed to receive some money from the French government to help with my uh, rent because I was staying at a, uh, a place where students lived. I was working and going to school at the same time. And I ran out of money at the end of the year. And I ran out of money for reasons of my own. I spent too much money on my card and I did not have access to the rest of my money because I couldn't use the card anymore because I went over the limit. So at that time, I had no resources. Even though I wasn't broke, I just couldn't get money, which is the same as not having money. So I had to depend on friends in order to support me for maybe about a month before I was able to have access to my bank account again and to get money. During that time, even though I had friends to support me, I felt very ashamed of myself for not being able to manage my finances or not being able to take care of all of my bills, all of my responsibilities on my own. And as a man, it's very disconcerting when you have to rely on other people to help take care of you. I guess I can add not just making a budget and sticking to the budget to the list, but also making sure that you have emergency funds and emergency support available to you just in case you don't have access to uh, your other finances and things of that such. So the next tip, the next big thing that I learned while living abroad is to learn to bend but don't break. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of statements or phrase saying that never compromise yourself. Well in actuality compromising is a very good thing especially if you are living abroad in someone else's culture in someone else's country and you don't really understand how to live life there and at the same time you're also living in a bubble maybe when you're in another country like how i was when i lived in france or even now in korea sometimes i have to hang out with people when i don't want to hang out with them or I have to make a sacrifice and eat some foods that I don't normally uh, eat. I, I don't eat pork, I don't eat seafood, and those are no compromises for me. But other foods, sometimes I have to eat, and I don't necessarily want to. But it's okay sometimes to compromise and to bend a bit because it can allow you to meet different people who have different experiences from you, and you can learn from those experiences. Okay, so the next point I think is very important and it's connected to compromising, not your beliefs, but being able to bend a little bit in order to make social situations more pleasing or more viable for your own growth. And this next point is to make sure you choose your circle, your inner circle very wisely. When I've lived abroad or even when I've traveled abroad, I met some people who they seem as if they are very nice or they're very caring, but there's always an ulterior motive. There's always something that that person wants from you that uh, they finally reveal later in their relationship. So it's very important that you choose people who are going to have your back, who you can call in times of trouble, not necessarily financial trouble, but maybe you're going through you know, a breakup or maybe uh, you know you hurt yourself or maybe you're sick and that person will be able to help you in a way that other people probably don't want to help you. For example, earlier this year I was very sick. I didn't have COVID. I was just sick. I had the flu or cold or something like that. One of my friends, she's Korean, her name's Hina. I messaged her. No, I think she messaged me actually and when she messaged me I told her that I was super super sick. The first thing that she did was call. She called me and she found out what was wrong or tried to find out what was wrong with me. Once she realized how sick I was she ordered food for me and the food came directly to my door and it's just not fast food she actually ordered groceries for me and she messaged me daily and she made sure that i was okay this is a person who is in my inner circle and i'm very very grateful but also because i chose her to be in my inner circle i met her through compromising myself by going out one night we became friends after that moment here's the last thing and this is quite important. Actually, it should have been the first note that I mentioned, and that is to learn the language and learn the culture of wherever you go. I can't stress this enough. If I didn't learn the French language, if I didn't learn Korean, even though I'm not very good at Korean, but I know enough that I can travel around the country to order food, to get a hotel or to say I need to go to the restroom. I can speak, you know, well enough. If I didn't know the language, if I didn't understand the culture, even to, you know, very minimalistic terms, then my life here and my life in France would have been incredibly more difficult than it was 
before or it would have been if I had not have decided to learn the language or the culture. Learning the language can open doors to you. It can allow you to meet new people. It can allow you to make connections that can save you. When you're living in another country and you don't know a lot of people, having access to more people, having access to a larger network is good for you. It can help you in ways that you might not have known. For instance, I mean, knowing Korean has been able to open the doors for me to work with Koreans in situations and jobs that are outside of my my normal nine to five job, I guess, where I'm able to travel and to take photos and earn a little bit more money than I would if I didn't know the language. Now, even though, as I said, I don't know Korean very well, I'm not uh, the best in the language. However, I can speak enough that <laughs> I can get by. So. With that being said, you know, I'm able to form new connections that can help me whenever I need. Learning the language, learning culture is very, very uh, important, especially here in Korea. When I travel around into the countryside and I speak just a little Korean, many of the people are very impressed. When they're impressed, they treat me well. They give me free things sometimes. They, they're very accommodating and they're always smiling and they're always very helpful. I don't learn the language and I don't put on a show just so I can get free things. But, you know, I actually try to interact with people on their level because it shows that you care. So when you go to another country and you don't try to learn their language and you operate just out of English or, you know, whatever language it is that you know, then it can be very off-putting for some people. Some of the natives can think that you don't want to, you don't respect their their culture, you don't respect their country, you don't respect their language, you think that you know English is the best language, you want them to meet you at your level instead of you going to meet them at their level because you're in their country. So you should actually should be speaking their language. But anyways, yeah, that, that's it. You should learn the culture, learn the language. Right, so I know that this wasn't a very fancy video. There is no B-roll, there is no, no photos or anything to accompany what I'm saying. I just wanted to come in and share with you some uh, knowledge that I've gained by being out of the United States for 15 years. I guess the last thing that I can say is you should try it. You should try moving out of the United States or you should try to visit another country for an extended amount of time and just see how people around the world live differently from you or how they live similarly to you because it can change your perspective and it can give you ideas in how to benefit your life more positively and how to grow and achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Someone else might have the missing link of information that you need in order to become quote unquote successful in your own right and that person could be in another country. We never know. This is Francois. I just wanted to come and share this quick information with you all. I hope you guys have a wonderful day wherever you are. Peace, love always. Thank you for supporting me and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care, child. Again, love you. Be good. Peace.